It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery. Black Eagle Arrows. Cabela's. Antler Action. Spot Shooter Archery. Tom's Custom Turkey Calls. Family Traditions Tree Stands. And Badass Slingshots. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. Your host, Mike Adams, Dan DeFall. We are not in the cabin. We are on the road again, we as are. Willie Nelson used to sing. Yep. Back he, in our favorite store, Cabela's. Yes, back in our favorite home store, Saginaw, Michigan. And uh, we're going live. You can see us on Facebook over there. You can see us on Periscope right here. So uh, yeah, doing you a know, live stream. Doing a little live streaming. Going to cut the show right here this morning, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, 9-11. It's 9-30 when we walked in the store about 8-55. Uh, flags at half staff. And, uh, you know, we. I, I can't even begin the show without saying, uh, you know, let's just give a moment of silence. You know, um, you remember where you were at? I remember where I was at. Absolutely. We were talking about that before they opened the doors and let us in and uh, talk to a customer coming in. He remembers exactly where he was at. And uh, you know what? I think it was the same type morning. It was. Bluebird sky, crystal clear. There, just was, like today. It, it, there was no wind. It was, it was a little cooler that morning, I remember. Okay. Um, I remember there was a chill in the air. And I mean, just from the weather, not from what happened. I mean, there was definitely evil in the air that day. But uh, Oh, absolutely. Um, got our uh, Cabela's American flag hats on today, uh, yep. just in remembrance. Uh, we're not trying to be cheesy here, folks. We're just trying to let everybody know we're thinking about them, thinking about their families. Uh, there was a guy here in Michigan that went to school here locally that lost his life that day. And, uh, you know, we just want to remember those folks. You know, and, and, and besides that day, the after effects from that, from all the, 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 the besides the survivors, the rescuers that went in and absolutely and all the health people, the that, police officers, the, the animals, the, yeah, the, the, the everything that had to, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Every, everybody that had to do with anything with that, you know. You want to yeah. step back, step back 15 years ago, you know, and, and think about what, what's going on in the world today. Think about what, what's going on in America today. Step back 15 years ago and, and uh, remember the patriotism and the love we had for, for our fellow Americans and for our police officers, our EMT guys, our firefighters, uh, our servicemen and women that are out there fighting. Um, you know, every time I see somebody wearing a hat where they've served or currently serving, go up, shake their hand, tell them thank you. And we'll probably see a few today. Absolutely. You know, and uh, I go out of my way to make sure to tell them thank you uh, yeah, from absolutely. the bottom of our hearts. Because if it wasn't for them, we couldn't be out here hunting, fishing, and enjoying the great outdoors. Absolutely. And that's why we are here. Fall great outdoor days, right? Yeah. How, how was yesterday? What did you think about yesterday? Busy. It was busy. Wow. We were going to do the show yesterday, and we couldn't even get the show in because it we, was so busy. We, so. We, couldn't, we couldn't get the show in. We were so busy. We had a plan, and that plan <laughs> went right out the window because when we got here and we stepped back into the archery department, boom, it was, uh, as you say, game on. Yeah. It was, like, uh, left and right, and uh, we had uh, one, two, three technicians at a time going at it, wrenching on bows. We were yeah. helping people get in line to get the bows worked on or crossbows. Yeah. Oh, man, what a day. And bef- even when we left at 5 o'clock yesterday, poor Mark. That guy, he didn't get out of the tech shop, I don't think, all day. I, I'm surprised we didn't find him here this morning because when Curled we left in the him, corner sleeping? Yeah, when we left, <laughs> we left him with a line of people and, and something to do. So, But, yeah, no, it was uh, it was a good day, and hope today's going to be just as good. It yeah. makes the day go by fast. It does. You know, uh, Sunday mornings here are usually a little slower. That's why we're doing the, the show. <laughs> That's why we can fit it in. Right. So <laughs> we got in here early, got set up, and uh, they opened the doors, and we just started started the show now. So uh, Right, we're exactly. Rock along, so. You know, so we got the, you know, let's knock this out and do our podcast and then prepare for the rest of the day. And hopefully a lot of people come through that door. Yeah. And, you know, and we want to say welcome back to all of our listeners. You know, we didn't do a show last week. Uh, we did a a PSE tech tip, and we did a throwback Thursday. But, you know, it was Labor Day weekend, and it was, more importantly, it was birthday weekend for Danny. So that's right. Not birthday, but birthday weekend. It it started on Friday, and I carried it all the way through the whole weekend. Yeah, your wife was uh, talking about how how pleased she was about uh, being able to uh, partake in that. Exactly. (laughs) It was was tour, tour to birthday weekend. She said, thank goodness it's over. See, at at our (laughs) age, when we get this old, we got to enjoy all the uh, weekend of it. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll remember that when it comes to my birthday this year. Okay. You know, maybe uh, I'll carry it through the whole week. We'll see how that runs. See, that's yeah. what we got to do. So. Yeah, I don't think so. 
But no, last week it was Labor Day. It was a good weekend just to, you know, be with friends and family and enjoy so it. Somebody just posted out here something about what's up, you crazy, and I won't put on there what they said. I don't even know who posted that. I missed the name real quick, but obviously somebody we know. Um, you know, we're just rocking it, man. We're here in Cabela's it is. hanging out. So You know, we stopped, had some breakfast, got you some coffee. It's a good thing. Mr. Grumpy. Yeah, it's a good thing, but... Uh, have you been getting ready for hunting season? Have you been busy? I know the last time we talked to you, you, you were well, finishing up the box blind. You were getting ready to head up north and put that thing up. Right, exactly. And uh, well, Good morning from Boise. All right, thanks, Boise. And um, it kind of changed a little bit, the plans. So I didn't yeah. end up going up north. You did not go? No. There was some change in plans. And uh, stay tuned to that because I don't know all the details yet, but it looks like that we might be doing... Uh, a logging project on our property now. Okay, good. And that just kind of sprung up on me the week before. Okay. Didn't so, want to put the box blind uh, out and have a tree fall on it. Yeah, it's kind of like, well, okay, I could go put this I could go put this block box blind up there, spend all that time putting up there and come find out maybe a tree or or, or something happens to it. Or one of the machinery things uh log cutting machines go across it and knock it over, huh? You don't want that to happen. Exactly. So it just uh man, I tell you what, it <laughs> If if the timing works out, it, it it's got to be done. We're gonna do it. it yeah. we, it's got to be done. Is the timing from what I'm getting perfect? No. But you know what? Let's just get it done. Get it done. Get it over with. Get it over on. with. Right. And start. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this year, then I'll have like a a clean slate. Right on. And then maybe during the winter, I'll develop a plan. Sure. And then start implementing. Well, so. and that's what we did with our place. You know, our our fir our cutting this year is done. Uh, we are doing going to do a winter cut on our property, uh, in the process of finalizing all of that right now. But we're looking at right after season, December, January, somewhere in that area. Yep. So uh, we do have a second cutting coming. And you know what? It's just it's something. If you've got property, you need to take the time and evaluate if it's something that's right for you. You know, get in there. Trees uh, can get old. They can get overgrown. They can, you know, cut your understory, and uh, it's not good for the habitat for all the animals. You know, and I'm not saying cut every tree down. It's just you need to have a forester come in, right? And, and look exactly. At it. And, and depending on what you're managing for, that's what you you kind of need to start that process. And, and uh, 80 of our acres were uh, cut over 20 years ago. Okay. So it, it's time. Okay. Gotcha. And gotcha. so the other the others, actually, hold on. Let me, uh, 120 of the acreage has been cut about 20 years i don't think the other 80 has been cut at all okay now that i think about it so it's time you know and, it, and, it, and it's good for the area anyways they're you know helping using our, our resources renewable gotcha so. anybody doing any bear hunting up at your camp or nope no bear. Any, no anybody in your area that you know of? uh nope nobody that i know of in the area is doing any bear hunting so uh they'll have a free pass this year gotcha. we'll, see, we'll see if any more show up we um, might may have one in our camp this year maybe okay kind of waiting and seeing so it's um, getting to be about that time i know uh in a couple of weeks jason mikoff will be heading up to up to the up there to do his uh extraordinarily different style of bear hunting exactly jason's from uh, backcountry hunters and anglers uh great organization out there helping preserve private uh, or public land preserving public land and waters for uh, us outdoorsmen so. and he was with us at bowfest Yep. Had a great time there. What do you think about Bowfest? Oh, man. Besides the, the two-hour downpour, mm -hmm. other than that, uh, I talked to Jim. I thought it was, it was, it was a good 10th annual Bowfest. Good deal. He uh, was happy with the results? He was happy. Uh, he was down a little bit in sales, but if you, you, know, if you take the two hours, subtract it, mm -hmm. it's a wash. Right on. So it could have been better, but it was good while it was going. So, But, yeah, it was a... It wasn't hot. It was warm. Luckily, there was a breeze coming through the tent. I think the tent went well. Uh, thanks to Cabela's here getting us the archery safe archery game to, to that play was cool. with. That was fun. So kids Mark, had a good time. Mark Hammer was there with his buck in antler uh, uh, antler action. Antler action. His uh, his grunt or his uh, rattling call. Is that not a nice buck? That is a huge buck. We've uh, had pictures on our website and from ATA and stuff. It, it's. If you haven't ever seen a 200-inch buck up close and personal, um, and, and no less a unicorn, yeah, there's no no way to describe it. No, there isn't. I mean, people were coming up to that thing, and and just looking at it and, and, and trying to to put their hands around the base was just it's man, incredible. It's, it's a incredible. buck of a lifetime, no yeah. doubt about it. Absolutely, and an Ohio buck. 
and an Ohio Buck. Uh, Jerry Lambert was there selling his books. Uh, books and humidity tend mm -hmm. not to go well together. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and then the 4-H girls were there. Yep. You know, the 4-H. Raised a little money for their organization, 4-H the Wildcats. They had a great bake sale this year, so hopefully all that money raised will go back into the 4-H to uh, get the equipment that they need. Rock on. Well, uh, you know what? We're running up on 10 minutes here in our first segment. Uh, we're going to stop our record, take our first break, step outside, and uh, we're going to continue the live stream here. Yep, we're, we're just going to live stream it right through. For the second segment, so uh, we'll be right back after this. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of deal and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back, second segment of the show, everybody. For those of you who listen to the podcast, uh, we're also live streaming here from Cabela's as well, uh, Periscope and Facebook. Today, uh, we've been talking a little bit about you getting ready for your logging project up north yep. and everything, uh, your box blind, why you kind of put that off. But, uh, man, I went up north for three days last week, and actually the, week, the, the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday before Labor Day. Okay. I'm tired. I'm still tired. We worked our tail off. I was going to say, you were doing a little huffing. Yeah, we, uh, we did a lot of work. Uh, working on blinds, working on trail cams, working on food plots. Started our trail cam uh, study sur survey, deer survey. So it's... Uh, you went a little four-wheeling with your car, too. I don't even want to talk about that. 900 bucks later. Jeez, oh, Pete's. Don't yeah. ever take your four-wheel drive into the woods if you don't know what's in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> you should know the trail you're going down and not... There create. was no trail, dude. Well, I know that, but... I you, was creating you, you a trail. You didn't know there was a log there either that... Well, I seen it. It was just a little one. Uh, there was a branch sticking up, and it got a hold of the exhaust system, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you did have some great footage of uh, you doing some... I don't know who was driving the tractor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we planted, I think... Last count was 48 acres. Is that plants. what it was, 48 acres? Yeah. Um, we, we turned under 48 acres of field. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of sand up there, a lot of blow oh, sand. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to build the soils. We've been working on this for years. And, uh, you know, what we've got left over, nine times out of ten we'll turn under. But we didn't turn everything under this year. We're trying something a little different. We did about half of what we got planted. Okay. And coming back in, turning it under, uh, disking it up real good, and then getting in there with a planter and uh, laying down some, some new uh, rootstock rye. That's something we planted last year. Had great success with it. It's a, it's a seed that's out of, it's made in a rootstock main, and it's made for cold weather climates or uh, places that it's hard to grow things. See, and, that, and, see, and that's the, uh, some of the issues I have with some of the, the seed companies out there that, mm -hmm. that tout, oh, you just, either you throw and grow or you plant this. and you yeah. But in Michigan and in Wisconsin and Minnesota and the, the more northern, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, it, you, you got different soil types up there that you're dealing with, and where we're at, I mean, it's it's pure sand. You know, it's it is really really tough to grow anything. Um, but we last year we we, we mixed it with uh, mammoth red clover and the rootstock rye, and we had great catches of it, and it, it did phenomenal. And the rootstock rye has a, a real high protein yield, which is good for the deer, obviously. Yep, good for antler growth. And uh, the deer were on it, you know, virtually all year. And, and that's awesome. And, and you, I think we just, you, you described this before, is that the rye would grow faster mm -hmm. than the clover, but actually protect the clover. 
It did. You know, we saw that this year, especially into, you know, the fawning season. Uh, what we were noticing was our rye, you know, we, we didn't cut it. We, we let it just let it grow and come to seed on top. And it, it would stand, I don't know, two and a half, three feet tall. And then the mammoth red clover, you know, was standing four to six inches underneath it. And the deer were having to work through the field to get to it to eat the clover. You know, because that was their preferred food right, of choice exactly. at that time of year. So they couldn't come in and just, I mean, flat out mow the field down like no. we've seen in the past. So they had to work for it, and it, and it kept that forage there. They had and to work for it, and it held them in the area. And plus it made, it made them stay a little bit longer. Exactly. You know, yeah. it, it took it took them a while to, to get through that and weed their yeah. way through it, which is kind of a cool factor, and right. I don't think you had that planned. No, it's just something we kind of came across accidentally. And the reason we didn't mow down uh, the rye right away is – we wanted, we, we've got bear in the area, and, you know, when it comes to fawning season, that's a, a predator of the fawns. We've actually witnessed and seen fair, uh, bear going through the fields on their hind legs and up and sniffing, trying to catch scent. And really? And they come back down in all fours and walk, and, yeah, they'd, they'd take a couple steps, stand up, sniff, and then, you know, they're back down again and walk. And, and they're constantly doing that through these fields looking for these fawns. And uh, we left that tall for that reason so the deer could... Uh, drop their fawns and protect them in that, that it high, would, it high would, ride. It would give them a safe haven. Yeah, and the coyotes, same thing. You know, it, it hit them pretty well. You know, and, and fawns, you know, virtually born with no scent yep. right away. So, um, it just it helped to protect them, give them to it, get on their feet, yeah, and get their legs on. It gave them that couple hour advantage. Yeah, you know, even yeah. days advantage. Yeah, and we we held that uh, up until oh probably first mid July giving those fawns a chance to get on their feet and get out. So, And then we come through, and then we did cut some of the fields. We mowed it down, and the other ones we turned on during planted. So now the big question is, have you gotten rain? You know what? This week we got rain. Okay. We got good rain, um, and actually the fields are starting to catch. Um, within about, oh, seven, eight days, we started seeing green. And uh, I talked to our camp manager, and he said, Fields are just starting. He said, you can see where the plantings are. He said, they're starting to green. So good. So we're getting good, good rain. And, uh, so now what happens... Uh, with that, because uh, here shortly, typical Michigan, we're going to have a frost. Mm-hmm. What, hap- what, what, what happens then? Um, you know, I'm not a farmer. I don't know. I mean, I, obviously the growth, okay. the, the growth does stop. But, uh, you know, we typically don't get a good hard, hard frost up until, oh, probably late October. Right, exactly. But remember this rye, you know, it's built for these colder climates. So, so. it's going to continue growing after the frost? I, that I don't know. Oh, okay. That, I'm okay. not sure. That's what I was kind of asking yeah. is if... Is because it's for cold temperatures, or is it up until frost time? Yeah, I don't know how okay. how that all works out, but uh, you know, I know by the time we get into rifle season, uh, we we'll potentially have some snow <laughs> at that time <laughs> of year. Yeah, depending on how far north we are at what time of the year. Um, yeah, we we got green fields, deer are on them, they love it. They're cool. It, so, kind of makes you excited for October, which is in just oh, man. two short weeks. Two short weeks, we'll be. Well, I won't be bow hunting, but bow season will be here. October well, wait, 1st. Today's the 11th. No, I'll take that back. What is it? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, three th- three weeks from today. Uh, well, actually, two weeks for Mara, right? Mara yeah. goes the yep. last weekend in... 24th. Yep, the so last weekend. Week. We Oct- definitely got to get her on. Well, she. I talked to her the other day. She's going to be bow hunting Ohio, uh, opening day, September 24th. Then they, uh, they've they got some other uh, commitments that evening that they have to attend, so... She's going to be out in the field, you know, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. She'll be out hunting that morning, and hopefully one of the bucks that she did see on trail cam early in the season will be there. You think if she gets a big buck, she might be late for her engagement? That'd be a question. That'd be a good question. So okay. you're out in your stand. You shoot a big buck. You look at your watch. Do you miss uh, a family member's wedding because of a buck? <laughs> I don't know. That's what a, would you do? That's a question we have to pose What would tomorrow. you do? Yeah. What would I do? Yeah. Depends on how big that buck is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. For all of Dan's family who have somebody that may be getting married here in the next year or two, don't do it during archery season or, or uh, firearm deer season. I got married a right week before gun season, so. That's your fault. Yeah, well, no. It actually worked out good because we went honeymooning for or hunting for our honeymoon. Okay. Well, you know, you're lucky that way. See? So, but, uh, yeah, so hopefully, you know what? We should get her on the show, get yeah. a report, see how she's doing. Uh, get her ready for her because they they go a week before we do. Yeah, they hung stands last weekend. Yep. So. Yep. I talked to her. They hung stands, so she's ready to rock and roll. 
But, uh, yep, our fields are planted. So 48 acres of you know uh, mammoth red clover and uh, rootstock rye. That's awesome. And it'll be interesting to see through your, uh, uh, your trail cam study here that you're going to perform and see what your fawn rate is. And then if you keep this up into next year and see if maybe this is something that kind of like uh, the uh, when you're giving them a safe haven, almost like a sanctuary, right. almost like see almost like a nursery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was looking for, a nursery. So, yeah, well, I call the coyotes cradle robbers. Well, yeah, absolutely. And you've got video of that, right? You know, we'll talk about that here in the next segment of some things I found on trail cam. Uh, it's not good. But, uh, yeah, I, I kind of think. You know, I talked to our camp manager yesterday, and I said, and I, I don't like to toot my own horn or anything, but I said, you know, there's a difference between an average hunter and a conservationist. And I, and I try to tend to think of myself more as a conservationist than a hunter almost anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm more worried about well, taking care of the deer and taking care of the property than other animals, well, than, than hunting. As you've seen, and, and as, as people have heard throughout the year how you've I've been going about this, you can almost see that switch over. Yeah. You're more worried about seeing what your herd is to start, the health of your herd, and what to do to make you, you you've uh, logged. Mm-hmm. That'll help improve. Yep. Now you've planted. That'll help improve. You yeah, you're plots, doing yeah. all the steps to become that more of a conservationist. And hopefully, as a hunter, the, you'll reap the benefits here. Well, hopefully everybody at our camp will. And well, that, and that, that, that goes for the whole camp. You know, and I guess... That's that's kind of where I look at it from. Is one of the things I like to do is it's not just for my own hunting, it's it's for the whole enjoyment of, of the the club, but as well as the surrounding hunters in the area. Because you know we started the deer co-op, and uh, man, you know I, I thought once we started that co-op, things were going to really just take off, and we're going to get you know a lot of land around us, and everybody's going to join on. And this year's been slow, man. Well, you know it's that old adage that we've talked about: is you got to get everybody on the bus and point yeah. in a direction. Yeah. You know, it, and then I think what will happen is by you, your camp leading the way mm-hmm. and showing, look, we've done this, 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 and this. And all of a sudden, because you're sharing information, we're obtaining this. Right. Some, I think you're going to get some more to go, wow, hey, let's do what they're doing. I hope so. You know, that's, that's the goal and the mindset. Um, I'm hoping that's the way it works. You know, but I've also got to keep in mind that if it doesn't work the way I want it to work, it's not always. It's not just about me. It's not about oh, what absolutely. I want. It's about what the group wants. It's about what the co-op wants, um, and, and those are tough things, you know, because we've all got different ideas of how we want to do things. I have a question. Mm-hmm. The person who did the planning was that a local farmer? Yes. Okay, yes. so that is a good for anybody out there. Yeah. Uh, you used a lo- so you didn't have to drag a tractor up there. You didn't have. You obtained a local farmer to come on and do it for you right right yeah a couple guys at our camp got tractors and, and mowers but uh you know it, it's hard to put that on one person and we don't have a planter you know it's uh that's expensive equipment yeah so that it, wasn't a small tractor he was using no 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 that was that was a huge huge john deere it wasn't your typical uh plow the field farm farm tractor from you know no. 1970s no it, it wasn't and uh this guy does this for a living i mean he's serious about it he's got the gps on board the whole nine yards it's uh so it's you, a big rig so basically you told him what fields you wanted done give him the seed and then he went to town yep yeah and i i got the drone flew the drone and uh got some pretty cool shots of the planting Sweet. as it was going on but uh i was i was really worried uh as he was planting because it was so dry it, there was it looked dusty you couldn't see the tractor you know, and that was uh, you did. You showed some little bit of video on, on uh, Facebook there, and it looked really dusty yeah. and cool. Yeah, yeah. Almost had that uh, dust bowl effect. Yeah, yeah. But we got rain, so that's good. That's yes. a good thing. You got to have that. So I tell you what, we're bumping up here, uh, almost the halfway point of the show. Um, why don't we take our second break, come back, and uh, we'll talk about some of the things that uh, found out there on the trail cam. All right. So we're gonna step outside, stop this record real quick, and we'll be right back after this. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air, engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience 
performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Third segment, segment of the show. We're still in Cabela's. Yeah. You know what? I like it here. You fit well in. So you know, you. back here in the archery department, you guys are watching the live stream. You can see uh, we're sitting right here in the main aisle. You know, we back are. In, back in archery. So uh, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. We need some customers. We will get some customers. Trust it, me. It is slow this morning, but it's, it's sunny it out. It gives us time to do this. Exactly. It's exactly so. No, it's a good day here at Cabela's, but... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Fighting a cold. That was something else that I, I had while I was up north. I got um, slept with the windows open. <laughs> Ooh, got a little chilly yeah, on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, there at camp. And, uh, yeah, I got a little chilly and got a little sick. So, but, no, we worked hard. Uh, got, like I said, talking about last time, like Fields playing trail cams. So you pulled cameras? Yeah, pull cards, uh, put two new cameras out, moved some cameras. Because now, cause now you know what? You don't have to worry about a logging project wiping out a tree or anything like that. Yeah, you know, and that was, uh, we didn't put, cam- most of our cameras didn't get put out until uh, the end of June, beginning of July. Right. You know, and I'm still trying to find some of those, what I call, sweet spots to put cameras. But, you know, what worked last year doesn't necessarily work this year because we cut a lot of logs. Yeah, exactly. You, you've got a, a, yeah. a new scenery. So, you know, we're still trying to find find them them tra- those new spots that the deer want to hang out in and kind of be on. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting there. But uh, we also started the uh, the trail cam project. Uh, so what, what, what segment of the trail cam project are we in? Beginning. Very beginning. Okay. We, so we just put them out. I um, moved right. some cameras, and we put two new cameras out. As, or actually, one, two, three, four, five, six new cameras. Uh, basically, we're running eight cameras on this project and uh, strategically placed across the property. And this is uh, something that, that's been touted by QDMA. I bought their trail camera stu- oh, yeah. you bought, guide you book. Got the book. Yeah, did some reading on that, figured out how, how it's all set up. And what we're looking for, is, we're looking for a lot of things. We're looking for fawn recruitment. We're looking for how many deer we have per square mile. We're looking at our buck to doe ratio. Um, the first thing we're probably going to be able to find out will be our, our deer per square mile, how many deer we have on our property. Then we got to figure out what our carrying capacity is for the property. And they'll say, okay, now we've got too many deer, yep. which, which we know. We, we know we've got too many deer on the property. But we've got to figure out what that number is so we know how many we want to take so we don't under or over harvest. Right. So now this, this is kind or of... Or kill. Kill. I'm not saying harvest. I don't, I don't like that term. <laughs> I'm not going to be PC here, folks. <laughs> um, so you're going to come up with a number. Okay, so when do you plan on pulling these cards to check this data? Uh, the, when I go back up on the 24th. Okay. Yeah. So it, it runs for 10 to 14 days. Okay. And uh, you, you, you do a placement, and you, you kind of let the, the cameras establish themselves, and then you take uh, your, your last 10 to 14 days. Okay. So. so then you guys will look at the photos, come up with a number, and that will be your Help determine yeah. your kill rate for the year. Well, we're thinking 25 does what we need. That's just a number we threw out there last year. Our target was 15. We we killed 12, and we've got more deer on the property than we had last year. There's no doubt about it. We're seeing we're seeing way more. So we we know the number, and 25 might not be enough. Right. Exactly. That's the question I'm kind of yeah. thinking is. is when will you know enough is enough? That might actually take a little bit of time. It might it might take a while to get those numbers in check. You know, the the bigger issue is our our camp is one of the few that has food plots. Um, there's a couple around that have them, but not in the numbers that we do. Okay. So we know we're feeding a lot of deer for around the area, and it's like okay. So if we kill off, let's say 25, well, that's going to open it up for more to come in. You know? Well, uh, what I'm thinking here is, uh, as 
as the food plots go, uh, deer are going to come become uh, obvious to the fact that you've got food on your property and start heading your way. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is going to be a continual issue that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, the other thing is, is getting those buck to doe ratio numbers a little closer together. Um, you know, and that's the other thing we want, we want to start seeing more mature bucks. So it, it's a process. I think that's going to, I think that's, this is going to play in, in, now that you said that about how the food pots are in your area, I think that's going to help the mature buck numbers because I think they're going to come moving in and go, hey, why should I leave? That's what we're hoping. You know, we've, we've seen a few up there, seen a few, um, not on camera, but we've seen, personally seen a few here there you know staging areas and things like that but with the cutting like i said it, it's kind of got the deer goofed up you know they're like whoa somebody just blew out the living room here you know yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look the same they who, rearranged their, all the furniture who took those walls out exactly so but in but the other side of that though is now they left all the tops they got a whole bunch more food yeah and we saw that right away too they came in uh, as soon as the cuttings were done it, it, machinery you could see machinery working and deer you know 100 yards away eating on the top so it's uh, it was pretty cool to see the dynamic of how that all worked out. But uh, yeah, the trail cam project is going to hopefully give us some, a good baseline to start from. And uh, some other things I'd like to try to do this year is take uh, actual lo- uh, the deer after it's been killed before it's field dressed and get it weighed. Okay, okay. So a, a before, well, and you you should be able to do that right at camp, right? That's what I'm hoping if we can get all the guys to agree to bring their deer in and then field dress them right there at the buck pole. You know, and, and not only not only do we get that information um, of the live of the live weight or dead weight at that point, <laughs> so to speak, boom, boom, boom. but uh, you know we'll be able to like maybe start tracking those numbers and seeing uh, are our deer getting bigger over right. the years with this this uh, you know getting the food source out there, but keeping the deer numbers down and so they, there's a healthy number there instead of competing for food. You know, they're actually able to just, to, you know, be on the property at the right number of deer and, and graze and, uh, and get healthier, so to speak. And okay, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Are you, uh, when, when, you, when you kill a deer, you won't harvest one. Right. Uh, do you gut it right there? I have and I haven't. Okay, so uh, and here's my, what, what is this leading to? I'm, I'm thinking. I already know where you're going with this question. I think you're, I think I know where you're, you're going. You're reading Go my mind here, but it's like it's, it's the fact. The fact is, I think that's actually a plus if you can get all your members to actually come back to a designated area to gut them. What's your thought process? I, I'll tell you mine. Okay, so from what we, we haven't even talked about your 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 predators you've seen on camera. Exactly, that's my so, whole point. It, it's because we we got a dumpster at camp. Yes, you hang the deer up. You get the weight off it. You put a garbage bag underneath it. You zip it. You drop the innards in, and you put it in the trash. You don't have that gut pile in the field, waiting for a dinner plate to, a dinner to plate serve for up coyotes. for yeah. well, coyotes and whatever other varmints you, exactly. you might looking for free food. Exactly, because um, that's what I was asking about. But I think that would be an awesome idea because we kind of started doing that at our place. You did. We take them back. We've been taking them back to uh, the barn. Okay. And gutting them in the barn. Okay. Because it, it just, I did it one time out in the field, and it, the the it was actually the the crows and the ravens and right. the eagles. Right. Man, did they have a party at my expense? Right. You know, th- there was twenty, thirty birds just squawking away, and besides being noisy, the deer were like, "What's going on?" Right. And. I, I know there's there's the coyotes, wolves. They're around. You know, and, and the other thing we we've, we've wondered about me, the manager and I. We've we've had this discussion: is does is there is there a scent given off that alarm the deer? It's like, oh, that's one of our our deer that just got killed. That's that that smell of deer I'm, death. I'm, I'm going to say no. You don't think so? Nope. Because I've shot a buck over a gut pile. Okay. He was standing right there, and I was like. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I don't think they can equate that. That that's a death. That's a death. Okay. I think it's just, to them. It's not an alarm factor. It's not an alarm factor. It might be a fact of life kind of thing. I got you. Because we uh, wondered, you know, yep. we never had any actual experience with it, but you know, it just the, you know, and that's the thing. It's once you start doing this kind of stuff, you start thinking all these crazy. Oh, things. Oh, I know. And it's like, well, I wonder, you know, and, and you do. It's like, how does nature know what? 
to do. And it's funny, and you're sitting there out in the woods, it gives you a little time to think because you have a little sure. time on your hands. And that's when, that's when it starts happening. Yeah. So what if? Yeah. But yeah. But, uh, but definitely with the predators, that, that's a key issue. So with that, getting them weighed before, um, you'll be able to get some statistics as to your, like you said, the, the weight health. of the, de- the yeah. health and w- where you're going with that. You're, right. You might be able to come with a median weight for your does and a median for your bucks. Sure. Well, and you bring it back to camp and everybody there is helping. You know, if we're all working together, y- you know, I mean, it's no secret we hunt up in the area where there's TB. Yep. In bovine tuberculosis uh, in, in the herd. We, we can check for that. You know, you can uh, have one guy looking at the, at the liver and slicing them, looking for liver flukes. And, yep. and that determines part of that, how heavy your predator population is. You know, because we've talked about this on the show before. If you go back and, and do a search on, on some of our older shows, when we worked with Turtle Lake Club yep. and Dr. James Kroll, Dr. Deer, that was one of the things they're looking for at that club when they're doing the deer necropsies is liver flukes and that and uh, the liver flukes and uh, there, there's another worm uh, that's in the intestines on the outside that you can see and that determines how heavy of a predator population you got. You can look at uh, the, the fat on the kidneys and if there's a good fat storage there, I mean this is later in the season obviously, but if it helps determine how stressed your herd is. Right, exactly. So. And, that, and that's one of the things you know, and that's the to go back to answer your question, you're becoming more of a conservationist. I, I I like to think I am. You know, I'm trying to learn. That that's the bigger thing, I think. Um maybe I'm 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 not there yet, but I'm I'm trying to learn to be better at I, I think helping. You can read a lot of it, but to actually do it is the other part. Gotta get your hands dirty. And like we just said a few minutes ago, uh by you leading the way, your your camp leading the way, hopefully it brings on the other clubs. I hope so. I hope it will, you know, and and working together, um, cooperation, spirit of cooperation goes a long way within your own camp and then with other camps um, and then in in the hunting community as a whole. Yep. I I think a lot of times we get too focused on, well, you know, okay, I'm I'm focused on my my 40 or my 80 or whatever size property you got. And your neighbor, you look at him as he's the enemy. I don't want him shooting my deer, you know. Don't go shoot my deer. <laughs> right, you know, and it's like work together. You know, if you if you start working together, all of a sudden this whole area becomes better and you get that same mindset. If you get, you know, and you don't have all have to say, well, you can only shoot, you know, if he's outside the ears and he's a, you know, three and a half year old or four and a half year old or five and a half year old, you know, set some set some goals. Right. You know, and, and, and then start working people towards a better goal, and a higher I, goal. And I think especially in your area, how it, how it might play out is it, you'll, you're going to go from that, oh, well, he's going to shoot my, my one big buck on camera. Mm-hmm. And I don't want you doing that. Right. To we now have five big bucks on camera. Yeah. Oh, he got one of them. Yeah. But I still know there's four out there, so I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a different mindset. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's different when you go down uh, in Illinois and in, in, in the big buck countries. And, and you know you've got... You know they're there. They're there. So yeah. do you see one? Yep. Did you hear it got shot on the other place? Yep. Yeah. But no worries because you yeah. know there's more there. Yeah. Spirit of cooperation. Yep. Exactly. Working together. Becoming a smarter hunter, a smarter outdoorsman uh, or outdoorswoman. Uh, learning, learning different techniques uh, of, of getting to your stand without spooking game. Learning scent control and, and making sure that you're hunting the wind and all those things to make you a more effective hunter. You know, people that are, are great hunters still make mistakes. That's why I call it hunting, not yep. killing, you know? Exactly. Uh, it, but, but learn learn from the, those mistakes, share it with others, uh, you know, and move forward. Uh, last year, um, I, I did. I had some trail camps set up, and, and it wasn't the area that I was hunting. It was where somebody else was hunting, and I seen a great buck there. And I'm like, dude, I said, I put a, stand, a tree stand up. Go hunt that stand. I put it up for you, you know? And this is like, huh? That's why I put it there, man. Go hunt that go stand. Hunt that, you've seen a buck there. Yeah, go kill that buck. Exactly. And uh, and, and that's a, that's one thing. That the, the trail cam, I think, has changed the way we do that. Is now, now you actually see what's there. It's not a surprise. Right. Yeah. You, you, I know it, there's, there's a big, a, a decent buck in the area. It, and it might not end up being the same buck. Right. Then you're really surprised. I think it, may, it makes you a, a more educated hunter. You know, you, you, if you know a deer there. Then you want to hunt there. If you're not, if you don't have any deer there in that spot where that camera's at, 
why put a stand up? It may look like the best spot, but why put a stand up and waste time if you're not getting anything on camera? You know, don't just take one time out and check a card and go, oh, there's nothing here. Move the camera a little bit, turn it. Maybe it's a different direction. Maybe you're just not aimed at the right slice of pie to see it. You know, exactly. You, you might need to turn it 25, 30 degrees the other direction, and bam, there, there's the trail. You yep. Know, he, or he's skirting around the edge for some reason. So, oh, yep. But yeah, just do your homework and, uh, you know, just become more effective. So, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, trail cams help because it also lets you know about predators. Dude, we have got coyotes. Um, one of the cameras that one of our guys is running, three coyotes, nose to tail, in a 10 second video clip. And uh, they're on the prowl. We've got two coyotes with fawns in their mouth. We've got a bobcat with a fawn in its mouth. So there you know, three fawns were taken. It, it, it just, and you know there's more. I mean, once you start to see them on trail cam, you know there's a problem. Yep, exactly. Um, we're getting trail cam photos uh, one after the other with uh, two or three coyotes. And they're not the same coyote, but they're all at the same time stamp, you know, within the same minute. Yep. It's like, uh, we know what's going on. You know, they're they're running heavy. Okay, so that's the other part of this equation that you're forming is now that you've created these food plots, now you've got other deer coming in from, from other places to the food plots to use. Well, here comes the predators from yeah. all over into your new place, right? Right. So it, it, it's, you know, it creates, I guess, more hunting opportunity. You get out there, it gives you an opportunity to get out there and, and smack something, you know, you kill the coyotes. You definitely got to get out there and do some uh, killing of the coyotes. Yeah. So it's all part of that game. But uh, I tell you what, we're running up here on our, our uh, time mark here for the third segment. So let's step outside. We'll come right back and we'll finish up the show. All right. We'll be right back after this. The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's Decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. Back to the third segment of the show here, or fourth segment of the show, excuse me, I can't fourth count. Segment. You're not well, counting well. You had yeah. coffee, too. I did have coffee this morning. Coffee's a good thing. It is. Rocket fuel for the soul. You know what? I, I think it's time we, uh, after this, we should really start practicing some more. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing I think with archery. You ran into a couple customers yesterday that kind of caught your ear when they said something. What did they say? I want to start bow hunting. And season starts in three weeks. That's kind of concerning. A little bit. Um, and both those gentlemen, I think, are coming back today. Or at least they said they will. Okay. So we're going to have a little sit down with them and uh, go over the finer points of practicing. Okay. They've got a lot of practice to do in the next amount of time. There's our rack of clothes for us. Yeah, I like way. that. Bringing a whole rack of camo out for us? I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's one of those things that... Um, and I've talked with the, the, the techs here, and they've actually had people come in and want to go hunting that evening. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Buy a bow, arrows, release. It's and, not a rifle. And go out to Or a shotgun, where you look down the iron sights and go bang. And even them you need to practice with. I am excited because of the wanting to get out in the woods. Right. That, I, I'm all for it. But what concerns me is... The amount of time needed to proficiently take care of the animal. Absolutely. You know, it's like not practicing your spearing. Right, right. So, yeah, we it, talked about that. Exactly. So, uh, we'll see what happens when uh, these people uh, hopefully come back today and we'll have a little bit of talking with them and, and hopefully get them practicing from this day forward. 
and uh, do some practicing between now and whenever they get out. Right on. You know, so it's just one of those things. It's kind of, whoa. So uh, other than that, we got a lot of people coming in and uh, getting their bows tweaked. Uh, a few crossbows went out yesterday. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. You know, so I, I'm encouraged by the, the amount of people and, and a variety of reasons I was given for the purchase of the crossbow. Such as? Fra- such as uh, damage to a shoulder. Okay. My shoulder isn't what it used to be. I can't pull back a regular bow, so I'm mm-hmm. looking at, at, at uh, crossbows. Another tool to put in the shed to go out hunting. Right. Uh, another one was, I have one, but I want another one because I can. <laughs> okay. That didn't go over well with the kids. <laughs> Mom and mom and daughter were what? But uh, and then the other one was, um, you know, it, yeah, it's just that whole getting a, another tool to get out there, get just something else to get you in the field. Uh, instead of the cold morning, thinking about pulling back that sixty pound bow, mm-hmm. they're ready to go with a crossbow. Gotcha. So yeah, there was quite a few crossbows that went out the door yesterday. The thing I I know I've I've seen here in the last year, um, the shows we've been doing. I'm seeing more guys, like you said, shoulder injuries. And uh, and even with that issue, um, actually our live stream just ended here. Something happened with that, so Periscope guys are gone. <laughs> uh, but we're going to continue with the show here. So uh, back to my point about the, cro- the crossbow. People coming in with shoulder injuries. And, you know, here at the range, you know, we get the cocking stream. We load it for them, put them up there, let them shoot it, check it out. But I've, I've, I've come to the conclusion now, I, I'm starting to make, I'll do that the first time. And the second time, I'm like, okay, now you cock it. Right. Because and that's if they can't good. pull it back, it's like, then they have to make that choice. Okay, oh, now I, I, need, I need to get one with the, uh, the AccuDraw or the hand crank. Yep. Uh, to make it easier for them to be able to draw. That's, you know, that's something to think about and consider if you're going to get a crossbow and you've got a shoulder injury. You need one that's got the, the, the draw assist. Exactly. You need that. And and be forewarned, it's going to be loud. Yep. It's going to be cranking away. Click, 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 click. Right. But, uh, yeah. But it's good to see those people not stopping. Absolutely. They still want to get out in the woods. They still want to take care of business, get out hunting, uh, and do that. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah. I had, there was a gentleman who came in yesterday, and, and that was one of the issues. It, he couldn't draw it. And... Uh, I'm like, okay, we, we need to start. Cons- you need to think about getting one that's got the draw assist. Yep. Well, I never thought about that. Well, you know, it's just. It's not. It, there's a lot of misconceptions about crossbows. They don't load themselves. Yeah, good, good or bad, either way. You know, those are some things you need to think about. So. Right, and then we've had a, a few people looking at that. Uh, a couple of people come in looking at bows. Yeah. And and getting them to test drive them. You know, I, we can't we can't stress enough to try a few different ones. Absolutely. Yeah, they they come in and I'll, first question I have is, do you have a preconceived notion of what you want? Well, I want this one. Yeah. Well, okay, we'll try that. Yeah, let's try a couple. Let, others. Let's start there, and and I'll suggest shoot some more. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah, it's been you know, I think I I kind of like seeing to me the numbers expanding. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that's going in a gr- good direction. I think so. You know, because we're hearing oh we're losing hunters, we're losing this, but. Uh, I think, plus also the crossbow opens up. The one gentleman that was looking at the one, and he was trying to figure out how he was going to get his two sons out there this year. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, well, you got some choices to make. There you go. So, But he was his, he was getting his boys out there. Yeah. So. Which means more stands to hang. <laughs> yep, you got it. You know, More what? box blinds to build, all that kind of good stuff. Um, are you hanging stands at all this year? Have you got your stands up? My stands are, uh, they're already up. If uh, Well, one came down last year, so okay, it's under a tree right now. So that one's going to probably go in the scrap metal pile? Uh, that one's, I don't know what <laughs> I'm going to do with that thing. i got to get that tree, though, because I'd like to use that for some burn wood. Okay, gotcha. But uh, no. Uh, so I take it you didn't take them down? You don't take yours down? No, the, the, we got some permanent ones that we use. Okay, gotcha. So, uh but the tree that mine was in fell. Nice. Yeah, glad I wasn't in it. Right. It would have been a little shocker. Well, we got, uh, I got three stands hung. I got another stand in the woods ready to go up uh, in an area. I just haven't quite picked out exactly where I want it just yet. Uh, but it's it's out there ready to go. Family Traditions tree stand. 
Uh, if you guys haven't checked out Family Traditions, make sure you get over to their website. Check out their tree stands. Uh, rock solid. I love them. Very well built. You know, it's you can put the whole thing together, bolt the whole thing up, and carry it on your shoulders. Like, you know, put your head between two I steps. I think you actually have a picture or not a video yeah. of you actually carrying a whole stand. Yeah, right through the woods. You know, I can boogie with them. It, they're very balanced. And, right. Uh, you know, there's like, oh, it's 40 pounds. You know, you get 40 pounds out there, 16 foot long. Um, yeah, it's like a, you know, big balance beam, I guess, or, you know, or a uh, balancing rod. But if you get it in that right spot, Man, There's a sweet spot to Yeah, it. you can just truck through the woods with it. And, and it's uh, perfectly balanced, and away yeah. you go. You know, and jam the two uh, short little legs in the ground and walk it right up, stand it up. It's, I can put these things. I don't do it by myself. I always have somebody with me. But you could. But, but I can do it by myself. Yeah. See, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Very easy to put up. I, but, I no, um, I did work on uh, before. Uh, not a, It was going to be a ground blind area. Mm-hmm. I reinforced my camouflaging okay so that's ready to go so now i'll take my pop-up line and be able to put it right into right into my spot and just brush it in a little bit more gotcha so. well i got a new pop-up line this year i got another uh primo's double bowl uh okay. used one last year worked great uh, those are nice blinds you know what so far uh, all these the new uh the pop-up type uh blinds they're pretty good yeah, they're getting better and better and better. I tell you what, what, what a, another a game changer in the industry. Was. Right on. The thing I wish is I wish we could get rid of, I will not use a Velcro seal on the door or a window. I just, I, I refuse oh, to because they're too, way too noisy. I, but get, let's, guys, let's come up with a way to get rid of the zippers okay. for the doors. So the Velcro, I will leave the windows that I'm not going to, I'll leave that. But right. if I'm planning, if I can shoot out that window... It's I'm, open. I'm, I'm doing it right away. Right. So yep. we're, we're getting we're getting mocked. Is that Kyle back there? Yeah, it's around? Kyle's Kyle's mocking us from the, the back. All right. But um, you're right. I'm not so the zipper not so much because that's just a real quick one yeah. zip and done. Dude, on I don't a quiet, know how frosty it morning. Though. It's it's way too just loud. Go slow. But it's I've loud. tried that and it's still loud. It's loud because you're you're, in, you're inside it. No, if you're on the outside trying to get in. Even it's not that. Then leave it undone until you get there the next morning. That's what I started doing. That's what I do. But still, you got to close it and go slow. You know, actually, what I'm thinking about doing is, you know, you go to the hardware store. You got these little, these plastic clamps. You can kind of ratchet down with your hand. Yep. I'm thinking about just gathering both sides of the zipper and using two or three of these clamps and just clamping them down. Oh, that might be a good idea. You know, a couple bucks trying that. So yeah, why not? But uh, yeah, so we got that. Um, We'll see how the log- logging, logging project goes and when that's going to happen because that's probably going to affect my October. If they're done by November, it, it shouldn't affect that. Get You better get that box blind in there. That ain't going to happen this year. I'll tell you that right now. Worked on uh, two platforms for box blinds. Um, uh, you had a yeah. cool video of actually one blind was coming down. Yeah, well, we had to move a blind for one of the members. Um, long story short is I, I had two platforms built risers they're eight foot by 12 foot in in size one's six foot off the ground the other one's eight foot off the ground so okay. i got them where i can try four wheeler underneath them and we took a box blind that that was already built on the ground took and set it up on top of the platform that one's done i got to build another box blind but the people who did this for me are the amish in the community yep. workers and i tell you what I, we also had a pole barn that needed a roof put on it and we had them do that. So in one day, they did the pole barn roof. They built two risers for me, and they moved a blind. In one day? In one day. And uh, there was five of them. And these guys were working like crazy. Great guys to work with. Had a lot of fun working with them. Um, but they know their craft. Uh, the Amish can ro- – they had these, these platforms built, and they're, they're movable. They're, like, built on skids. Heavy duty. I mean, I think a tornado could come through, and it'd probably really? still be on the ground. Yeah, That's awesome. So – uh, but yeah, they we had this blind to move, and it was on sixteen foot poles. It was a box blind, and it just sat on top of these four poles. It was like a uh, kind of a pyramid style, okay, deal. And we had to lean it over onto the ground so we could move it because it's too high to move with a tractor. And we, you know, me and the camp manager we kept looking at it. I was like, "How are we going to do this? How's this going to happen? How are they going to be able to move this?" And uh, they looked at it and go, "Yep, we can do that. Go get three ropes." 
Just get three ropes. Okay, so we got three ropes, big long ropes. They tied them to the undercarriage of the, the blind. Okay. You know, the 16-foot portion. This one young Amish kid, he 15, 16 years old, <laughs> his dad says, climb that tree right there, put three screws in, and we'll put the, the rope between the, two, the, between the screws. You know, use it as a guide. Okay. You know, so it's on, and he went 16 foot up. He went level. He climbed this thing like a bear. Tennis shoes and bare hands. He just scaled it. <laughs> and I, I was just like in amazement. I'm like, are you kidding me? So he goes up. And he's got his uh, cordless drill and zip, zip, zip. Has the, the line up there. And that was used as a guideline to take, okay. take tension off. The other one, we, me and uh, the, the dad, he took and wrapped it around a tree one time completely. And we used that as a clutch. And him and I were hanging on to it, okay? And, and so the other four guys, uh, and then one guy was just using one as a lead. Uh, so that was the three ropes. But the, other, the four, the four uh, kids went over, and they got a hold of the bottom of this 16-foot tall blind right. and fl- started flipping it. Picked it up, got it off the ground, got it leaning. So we're slipping the clutch on the tree. <laughs> and it really, they didn't, even, they didn't need me on the end, the, the, the dad that was holding it. We just kind of gently letting it go, and it was go- and it was going over. Yeah, yeah. And they took it all the way to the ground, all the way to the ground, nice and easy. And I was like, "Wow." He's like, "Well, no." He says, "You just got to think about it. It's not hard." And I'm like, <laughs> "They do all this stuff so much, you know." I mean, you think about all the barn raisings and things that they've done through the years. Well, that's it. They and know how to use leverage and stuff. That's what they've learned, and like you said, they're very good at their craft. Yeah, and, so. I'm, and, and you had them re-roof the barn. Reroof the barn real quick. Yeah, that was done in a couple hours. That was done in yeah, no time. They just put their mind to it and yeah, just did it. Wow. So, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was an action-packed three days of nothing but just work, work, work. And and Thursday night up there, I got to see the Northern Lights. Oh yeah, you you mentioned that. Put some pictures up. Oh my gosh. Is that, that cool or what? That, those were intense. It's probably the most intense Northern Lights I've seen. That is so cool. So how that comes, it's amazing to me. I've seen them up at our place, and it's just, it's a wow factor. Yeah, it, it blows your mind. So it does. But uh, well, you know, we're, we're running up here at the end of the show. We're here at Cabela's. Um, you know, it's a great weekend here. If by the time you listen to the show, the sale's going to be over. But you know what? No, actually, have a, no. You you've actually got to the 18th. Oh, that's right. It is to the it 18th. runs to the 18th. So you got another week. Got another week. That's of, right. Of uh, great Mind outdoor mistake. days, outdoor days sales. Uh, at your Cabela's, so go on to your local Cabela's, check it out. Well, next week I'll be at Dundee working uh, for Vortex nice. Optics, so nice. I'll be hanging out at the Cabela's down there. So come see me. And uh, with you know, get out and do some practicing because uh, time's Getting running ready. short. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, and uh, and since our last show, I've got a new hunter in the family. Yes, you do. My first grandchild. Your first grandbaby that is now officially here. Yep. Took a little prodding and whatnot to get here. Yeah, yeah, a long labor, but uh, Mama and Baby are doing fine. And uh, and you're buying gifts for the little guy, right? Yeah, he got his first camo hat yesterday. Yes, he did. Posted pictures online with that, and uh, his name's Buck Snort. Benny, uh, Buck Snort from. I, I like that. <laughs> you know, but you know what? That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby B. Yep, his name's Bennington, and. Uh, I think they're going to call him Ben, but I'm calling him Buck Snort. I'm calling him Benny, so there he's going to have a few names. Yeah. Just don't call him late for dinner. The, so. If he's like you, he would never be late for dinner. Right on. So, Anything else you want to throw in for the end of the show? Nope. It's just uh, get out there and do some practice and then get ready for season wherever you might be. I know some seasons have already kicked off. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulations to Jeff Summers. Yeah. Looks like shot. he smoked a, a big bear. And, and I think he couple, sunshot one, too. Yep. A couple in that group. Smoked one in Saskatchewan, I think they were. Yeah, so the guys from over Simply Outdoors are hitting it hard. Yep, and then I've seen some pictures posted at, at, from other states. Yeah, geese, goose oh, yeah, season's goose open hunting. here. Yeah, goose. So goose season's open here. They in were Michigan. flying this morning when I picked you up, huh? Yep, yep. Shot a little video of that and posted that. So, yeah. That's so cool. It's all so, good, man. Nope. It's a we'll good be time to be outdoors. Next week. If you guys see uh, you know, any of your, uh, your, your local. Uh, police officers, EMTs, firefighters out there. You see people who have served in the armed forces or are currently serving, go over and shake their hand and tell them thanks. You know, and remember, you know, today is 9-11, and, uh, you know, we just want to give thanks to those people who are protecting our hides. So that'll do it for us this week, folks. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, 
Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.